Hi everyone and welcome along. Before I let you know what we're painting today, I thought I'd give you a little update on the Sunflowers for Ukraine tutorial I painted uh, a few weeks back. So at the time of filming, it's nine days since we launched that and with all your wonderful views, we've had 12,000 views, which is amazing. And that's raised just short of 140 pounds. Now that may not seem a huge amount, but just remember that is purely from advertising revenue. So keep watching, keep clicking away and we'll just keep sending those funds where they are needed. Okay, so what are we painting today? We're doing a beautiful spring floral garland, really inspired by how translucent we can paint with watercolour to get those beautiful diaphanous flowers and leaves. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, we're going to have some fun with some uh, loose and trans translucent style painting today. So we're going to do a nice little garland. We need a, an initial sort of curve to help us know the direction in which things are going to go. And then if you wanted, you could sort of mark in the central point of, of flowers you want to pop in. So I'm just going to do a little circle. It's just going to show me where I'm going to put a few, a few flowers. Um, sort of want to make sure they are referencing the central line. Um, and now what I'm going to do, let's just bring my palette down to show you here. Um, yellow ochre and permanent rose mixed together make a wonderful blush colour. There it is there. So I'm going to be playing around with those two colours um, to make some interesting flowers. So I'm going to get a nice large brush. I'm going to get four, size four pointed round, part of the Pro Art range that I adore and that I sell in my Etsy shop and that you're welcome to get a set of. We ship globally, which is very cool. Okay, so I'm going to begin with just a really, really simple, um, we're going to be sort of fanning out petals in a quite sort of loose style. You see how I'm really sort of allowing the brush to sort of play around and I'm just going to keep that fanning out. It's very pale. I'm sure Ant is cursing me right now in the edit because he's like, I can't see it. And um, maybe some of you are too, but this is the trouble with translucent watercolour is, is something that we should all be trying out more of. Um, and the trouble is, is it begins very pale, so just got these very sort of feathery petals and also we've got some sort of unpainted space in the middle but not all. Now what I'm going to do is get a little bit more colour in here and just, well you saw that, we're just going to dab it and uh, allow it to fan out and that just little bit of colour there is really going to help define the shape of those petals. Now we've got that nice flower in there. I'm going to do a slightly smaller version here. So let's have another go. Um, I've got that a slightly more colourful mix here. So size two brush this time because I want slightly smaller flower. Using the central circle be my anchoring point for my petals. Fanning them out. Um, but just making sure the petals are very delicate on the inside. You see how there's unpainted space around each one there. I'm using the tip of my brush and then fanning it out. Just feeling as I go really. And then the last one, you always feel like you can't fit it in, but you can, you can. I find that as long as your petals have been anchored well in the middle, then you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so this time I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre, as well as some of the pink, and just allow that to fan out. Okay, so I want that to dry 100%, and then we're going to add two more flowers layered over the top. Two very pale flowers have now dried and now I'm just adding a fraction more colour into my watery mix. 
for my next flowers. So they are going to layer over the top and this is the very reason why we start with such pale petals because I want to be able to have more layering up over the top. So the same process, this time I'm using my size 4 brush really fanning those brush strokes out. Now I know some of you comment to me saying that you struggle to keep things sort of wet on the page, that the, the paint sort of dries in, seeps in, or your page doesn't handle the wetness all that well. Well, if that is the case, there are a few things you can look at. So naturally, some of us pick up more uh, water on the brush than others. So if you're finding everything's drying way too quick, then have a see. Just pick up what feels like an uncomfortably wet amount of colour onto your brush. Now this time I'm also adding a little bit of yellow ochre to the tips of the petals as well. Lovely. And I will just add an extra dash of colour to that centre there. Now it looks like we've sort of ruined what came before, but don't worry, these petals are going to crisp up and dry just the same. Okay. Um, the other thing you could look at is the general sort of humidity in <clears throat> the environment you're in. I mean, if you're in a very, very hot country, I think you have to accept that it's going to be a little bit harder for you to paint at the same pace as somebody in a, in a temperate wet climate and not have your paint seep into the page and almost disappear. Okay, we're just doing a, a little flower for this last one. But I'm still using this, the size four brush and it does seem to work. So you see that fifth petal is just sort of blended in there, but it's absolutely fine. And we'll get, get <clears throat> a little bit of yellow ochre and reversing the process we'll get a little bit of the permanent rose on there okay so we've now got a lovely um basis for our garland we've got our, our focal flowers nice and loose but actually what we're going to do is whilst they're drying i'm going to mix up a bluey green So I've got some turqu cobalt turquoise in there. I'm also going to get some French ultramarine. I want this to be really quite a cold, piney green. So I think that'll work really nicely. And what we're going to do yet again, we're going to work it into lots of water, get a really nice translucent paint once again. And we're now going to play around with foliage on our garland. So I, what I, I want is to have every now and then a little bit of a bleed and a blend. So if I just begin knowing that this is going to bleed in, which I think is pretty cool, I'm just going to paint a nice line of foliage. fully knowing that that is going to bleed into the edge of that flower. I'm going to have one come off here. I'm going to just get a slightly larger brush to paint in some larger leaves. hold off there. Okay, now I will just pop 
a leaf or two. I just want to get a few of these in whilst I know these two top flowers are still a little bit wet. But of course it's going to layer over the top of that flower we painted in, which is really cool. I'm really hoping you can hear the amazing noises outside my window of sheep and lambs bleating. It's so cute. Um, so I can layer over the previous flower, but that's going to bleed into that one. Okay, so this is all looking really fun and um, I'm just sort of being quite pacey to make sure that I make the most of the wet edges of those top flowers. But I'm also going to be adding a layer of foliage to the fully dried piece. So we'll just give that a moment and we can also actually, well, let's add a little bit extra in the top here. Yep, that's still wet. Cool. Now pink and green are wonderful colours to go together. They're sort of roughly across each other on the colour wheel. Really good complementary colours. But you can see I've, I've played around with having an orangey pink and a bluey green. And that's working really nicely. We've got all these lovely translucent layers and now we're going to add in just something a little bit more deep and intense. So we'll just let that dry a minute and come back to it. So it's important to keep colour palettes um, consistent and so I'm going to bring back in that um, pale yellow ochre colour um, and what I'm going to do, I love this technique, um, I'm going to paint little sort of wet, wet circles, wet blobs of the yellow ochre colour and of course these flowers are pretty dry now. And then I'm going to take a very thin brush, my four tenths, and get a concentrated sort of darker version of that um, mix that I was doing for the leaves earlier. And I am going to paint A line, a little stem that is going to just kiss the edge of those little watery blobs, and we're going to end up with a lovely little set of little berries and then I can also paint in extra little leaves in this contrasting concentrated colour. And this layers up beautifully over the top. 
And so now I'm just playing around with the different colours I've got in the palette. Um, and everything's starting to dry, so it's sort of all a case of layering. So here's the yellow ochre in a little leaf shape. Now I'm going to take some of that darker colour and just get the bottom there and maybe paint in a few more leaves in the darker colour. As long as the layers you've painted previously have dried for the layering process, I mean, you might be very keen on having a another sort of bleed and blend, but at this stage, when you're using the stronger, darker colours, really, the more effective approach is to be layering up. I quite enjoy this um, yellow ochre mixed in with the darker tones. I just think it works really well. And if you're feeling a bit like, oh God, how do I get the right amount of water on the page, the right amount of translucent color to then get a really good blend, then just head over to my quick fix um, playlist because that is the place where we do really um, quick five minute videos normally where we just focus on a single issue a single problem um, just like how do I get my uh, brush strokes and the amount of water I put on the page the right amount so that I can do nice blends and even blends um, and yeah and you will find videos on that and I thought this week because we're looking at translucence we did daffodils on Tuesday as well um, we can just do a really nice focus study on getting really nice translucent color okay let's see what happens when I bring my brush the branches that's kind of fun and then of course there's always ones just poking out halfway from behind the big flowers. Now the big flowers, they've worked really nicely, but also they're looking a bit like they could do with some detail in the middle. So don't worry, we haven't forgotten about them. I'm just gonna go all the way around, get all the nice leaves in, and then we'll go back in for that. So we've now got a lovely composition. You can see quite a clear sense of a curve going down the way through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place um, some detail in the middle of my flowers so I'm just getting some yellow ochre mixed up and what I'm going to do is I am going to place in a little sort of halo of dots in the yellow ochre that sort of dance around the outside and then with my tiny weeny brush, what I want to do is just have a few sort of darker little spots in the middle. And then I want to just use my brush to join them. So a few lines. And then just a few dabs. And as long as you don't sort of overwork it, what looks currently like a bit of a mess in the middle is going to crisp up and look really nice. So I'm going to try sort of the opposite here and use. cluster of little dark blue dots around the edge. So there's the circle. So let's paint 
painting in these dots. Some could be those little circles like I've just been painting with actually a little bit of unpainted space in the middle. We want a range of sizes. And then we're just going to draw that colour in. A clean wet brush into the middle. don't need to worry about every single one. I'm just going to get some yellow ochre and dab that in the middle there. And then a few just out and about around the edge. And there we go. We have got a lovely uh, translucent loose watercolour garland. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed that one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with it. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, just hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. Until next time, bye.